Hi everyone, my name's Shane. Uh, I work in cardiology and I don't know what this picture means. This picture was first, it was done in 1923 and it's one of the first examples of abstract art. And then after this, abstract art became a thing. And what it represents is really hard. Everyone has a different opinion about abstract art. That's what makes it interesting. And for me, this sums up my PhD, but it also sums up the condition that I'm studying. Heart failure with preserved ejection fraction is quite a mouthful to take in. But if you think about your heart failing, it's not doing its job. It's not matching what your body needs. And for a long time, from the time this picture was drawn until now almost, until the 80s really, we didn't have a good idea of what was causing it, except for the fact that hearts didn't pump properly. They were weak. In the last 20 years, we understand that those, that those people who have the reduction in pumping capacity, those people who feel short of breath, who get fatigued, who have swelling of their legs, there's a whole group of them who have a normal pumping capacity as well. And we don't know why. Why do they have the same symptoms? Why do they feel as limited? They have a normal pumping capacity. They have a preserved ejection fraction. But despite that, they feel short of breath just in the same way. We know that it comes with increasing aging. We know that it comes with people with high blood pressure. And we know that it goes with diabetes. And we know that it goes with obesity. And as you can put together, all of those things are much more common now than they have ever been before. What's very important is that for people with reduced pumping function, we have all kinds of treatments. We have tests that can find the reason why it happened, and we can have drugs and devices that will reduce their chance of death significantly. And for this condition, now the most common form of heart failure in the world, we have nothing. And we look at it and we think, why have we failed so far? And the reason is this. Every circle represents something different, a different mechanism, a different subgroup. In my PhD, I've done animal studies looking at the mechanisms as to why this condition happens. We've done studies looking at humans who've undergone extensive testing and found out the subgroups as to why they became short of breath. We've done a randomized controlled trial of a new drug working on several different mechanisms to help them feel less short of breath. And we've employed artificial intelligence to find these subclusters of patients and see can we target treatment more specifically to each of these types of groups. At the end of the day, this picture represents a couple of things to me. It represents the different subgroups of patients, some older, some with higher blood pressure, some who are more obese. It represents failures in the past where we've tried to target the big circle when we should have been understanding the small circles. And the biggest thing for me is it represents the giants on whose shoulders I stand. All different people around the world, including my supervisors, who've been people to find all of these different areas and help us understand what this big black circle is understand what is heart failure with preserved ejection fraction, what the mechanisms are, and how we can treat it. Thank you very much.